Dear students and friends, in this video, I am going to explain about IC engines. IC engines are the engines in which the combustion of the fuel takes place inside the cylinder only. We have external combustion engines also. The best example for external combustion engine is steam engine. These IC engines are classified into two types, two-stroke engines and four-stroke engines. These four-stroke engines are very frequently used in our cars and bikes. In our two-wheelers and four-wheelers, very frequently we will notice the petrol engines. For four-stroke diesel engines, best example is heavy-duty vehicles and locomotives. Previously, we used to have the two-stroke petrol engines for two-wheelers and four-wheelers. Nowadays, all the two-wheelers and four-wheelers are coming with the four-stroke petrol engines. Two-stroke diesel engines are used in marine engines. This is the broad classification of ICE engines. Now we will see the design of ICE engine components. So ICE engines, the primary function is to convert the heat energy into mechanical energy. That's why the parts of the ICE engine are subjected to thermal as well as mechanical loading. That's why if you design the ICE engine parts only based on the strength point of view, the failure may take place because of the thermal loading that means temperature rise. So that's why we have to take care of both thermal and mechanical loading here. The main ice engine parts are first part is piston, next one is connecting rod, the last one is crankshaft with crank pin, crank web and shaft etc. These are the three important parts of the ice engine. First we will see what is the piston. Piston can be defined as a machine element which reciprocates within a cylinder and either moved by or moves the fluid which enters into the cylinder. So this is the definition. So piston sometimes it will move the fluid that is in the case of compressors. In the other case it is moved by the fluid that is the case of ice engine. In the case of ice engine the fluid enters into the cylinder then the combustion takes place then because of the gas load the piston moves from the top dead center to bottom dead center or inner dead center to the outer dead center so that's why in ice engines it is moved by the fluid in compressor it moves the fluid that is the purpose of the piston these are the main important parts of the piston this is called as the piston head so these are the piston walls and here you will notice the piston rings these three are the piston rings, this is the oil ring. The purpose of the piston ring is to avoid the leakage of the combustion gases into the crankcase. This is the crankcase area. That is the purpose of the piston rings. In the case of oil ring, this oil ring is used to avoid the leakage of the lubricants which are placed inside the crankcase into the combustion chamber. That is the purpose of oil ring. Then this is the piston pin then this is the connecting rod so the connecting rod is placed on the piston pin with the help of a bearing bush to oscillate the connecting rod around the piston pin and piston pin placed inside the piston with the help of this circlip so this is the construction of the piston the length of this piston excluding the space occupied by these rings is called as a piston skit in the design of a piston, we will find piston skit length and the thickness of the piston head, the side wall thickness and the dimensions of the piston rings, all these things, dimension of the piston pin, all these we will design in the design of piston pin. The following are the points to be considered while designing a piston for an IC engine. The first and important point is strength to withstand the gas and inertia forces. When the combustion is taking place, the gas load will directly act on the piston. That's why the piston must have the sufficient strength to withstand that gas load. And inertia forces. Initially, the piston will be in the rest. We have to take that into the reciprocating motion. That's why we have to overcome that inertia force. When it is moving from rest to some kind of motion, we have to overcome that inertia force also. That's why we have to consider the piston with sufficient strength to withstand the gas load as well as the inertia force. 
when the combustion takes place it generates heat thus temperature rise takes place on the piston head we have to dissipate it to the surroundings properly then the third one is gas and oil sealing of the cylinder in between the piston and the cylinder we have to place the sealings with the help of piston rings and oil rings so this will avoid the leakage of gas and oil adequate bearing pressure when the piston is reciprocating inside the cylinder the piston wall will be in contact with the cylinder wall that's why when two surfaces are in contact and they are in the motion we will get the bearing pressure so we have to consider that bearing pressure also then minimum mass to reduce the inertia forces when the mass is more automatically we will get the more inertia forces when the mass is less we will get less inertia force that's why we have to minimize the mass of the piston to reduce the inertia forces in parts of the piston the first part is piston head already i shown that in the diagram then second one is skit skit is the length of the piston excluding the space occupied by the piston rings and get join pin or piston pin and piston rings all these already we have seen in the previous slide then coming to the piston materials the most commonly used materials are cast iron and aluminum alloy cast iron pistons are used for low speed engines and aluminum alloy pistons are used for high speed engines the coefficient of thermal expansion of aluminum is approximately 2.5 times of cast iron that's why aluminum pistons require more clearance between the piston and piston wall that means piston wall means cylinder here coefficient of thermal expansion of aluminum is approximately 2.5 times of cast iron that means aluminum will expand more compared to the cast iron when it is when the piston is expanding more when the temperature rise taking place automatically we have to give sufficient gap for that expansion if the sufficient gap is not there in between the piston and cylinder automatically piston expands and it will lock with the cylinder it will not reciprocate because of that expansion so that's why more clearance is required for the aluminum pistons coming to the thermal conductivity thermal conductivity of aluminum is approximately 3.5 times of cast iron therefore aluminum piston will have less temperature difference between the center and edge of the piston the main advantage of aluminum piston is thermal conductivity for aluminum is 3.5 times of cast iron that means for aluminum pistons whatever temperature you are getting because of that combustion that can be easily dissipated to the cylinder walls and from the cylinder walls we can dissipate that to the surroundings that's why from center to the edge of the piston very easily we can dissipate the heat in the case of aluminum pistons compared to cast iron in the design of piston first we will start with the design of a piston head strength based design we will see after that we will discuss the thermal based design the piston head may be treated as a flat circular plate of uniform thickness fixed at the outer edge and subjected to a uniform distributed load due to the gas pressure considering the bending failure thickness of the piston head t1 is t1 equal to d into root over 3 by 16 into p by sigma t here you are going to get the t1 in mm millimeters where d is the cylinder diameter in millimeters small p is the maximum combustion pressure this will be around 4 to 5 newton per mm square newton per mm square means mega pascal sigma t the sigma t is the permissible bending stress that is 35 to 40 mega pascal for cast iron and 20 to 25 mega pascal for aluminum when the data is not given for cast iron and aluminum you have to use this data okay then now we'll see thermal design the piston absorbs the heat of the combustion and transmits it to the cylinder walls that's why thermal stresses will induce inside the piston head considering the heat flow thickness of the piston head can be given as t2 equal to h by 12.56 into k into tc minus te and here you are going to get the t2 value in meters okay where this k is the thermal conductivity in watt per meter degree centigrade this k value is 46.6 watt meter per degree centigrade for cast iron 
174.75 watt per meter degree centigrade for aluminium then this tc value is the temperature at the center of the piston in degree centigrade that is 444 degree centigrade for cast iron and 275 degree centigrade for aluminium then te is the temperature at the edge of the piston in degree centigrade and tc minus te value is around 220 degrees for cast iron and 110 degree centigrade for aluminium so when the data is not given you have to consider this data coming to the h value h is the heat flow through the piston head in kilowatts h equal to c into hcv this is the higher calorific value in kilojoules per kg into m m is the mass of the fuel used in kg per bhp per second and this bhp bhp is the brake horse power and c is the constant representing the portion of the heat supplied to the engine which is absorbed by the piston then bhp equal to ihp into efficiency ihp means indicate horse power then ihp equation is plan by 60 in watts so here pm pm means indicated mean effective pressure in newton per mm square l is the stroke length in meters a area of the piston in mm square here what you have to notice is the important point this l you have to take in meters and this area you have to take in mm square that is the important point here in this equation then n equal to number of working strokes per minute so number of working strokes per minute for four stroke engine is n by 2 that means for each power stroke we are going to get two revolutions so that's why working strokes are n by 2 in this case if you take, if you go for four stroke engine if it is two stroke engine you can take as it is number of working strokes and strokes in two stroke cycle both are same and maximum value of t1 and t2 is recommended as the thickness of the piston head t t1 you are finding based on the strength t2 you are finding based on the thermal design the maximum value of t1 and t2 you have to consider as the thickness of the piston head that you have to denote with t then thickness of the ribs is t by 3 to t by 2 where t is the thickness of the piston head coming to the wall thickness the thickness of the piston wall under the rings may be taken as equal to thickness of the piston head and it decreases towards the open end of the piston at the open end you have to consider this as 0.25 to 0.35 times of piston head thickness because at the open end no mechanical loading and no thrust this is the reason for decrease of the thickness at the open end piston rings piston rings are used to seal the combustion chamber so that the gas of the combustion do not enter into the crankcase these rings are called as compression rings the second type of piston rings are used to seal the lubricating oil of the cylinder walls on the downward stroke so that oil do not enter into the combustion chamber these are called as oil rings and another purpose of piston rings is to transmit the heat from piston to the cylinder walls radial thickness of the piston rings tr equal to d into root over 3 into pr by sigma t okay these are the d pr and sigma t values axial thickness ta equal to 0.6 to 1 times of tr once you got the tr value radial thickness from the radial thickness you can get axial thickness okay the distance of the first ring from the head you can take as 1 to 1.2 times of t distance between the ring grooves you can consider 0.5 times of ta so once you find ta you can get this value piston skit the length of the piston excluding the space occupied by the rings is called as a piston skit connecting rod side thrust will act on the piston this will cause normal reaction from the cylinder walls this pressure will act on the project area a equal to 
L into D. This is the project area. Piston is moving in the vertical direction, but connecting rod is connected at an angle. Because of this inclination, you will get some side thrust here. This side thrust is acting on the projected area L into D. So that's why this PB is the bearing pressure in between the piston and cylinder. Then side thrust R equal to area that is L into D. This is the area into bearing pressure PB because force is equal to pressure into area. So that's why this is the area, this is the bearing pressure. So bearing pressure for low speed and high speed engines are like this. From the maximum gas load, you can get the side thrust using this relation. R equal to 0.03 to 0.09 times of this maximum gas load. Once you get this R value, that R value you can substitute here and you can find the piston skid length. Design of piston pin. Piston pin is also called as gudgeon pin or wrist pin. It is used to connect the piston and connecting rod. So this is the diagram showing the piston pin. This is the piston pin. Length of the pin in the connecting rod small end is 0.45 times t. That you can notice here. This is the connecting rod small end. This length is 0.45 times of d. Length of the pin in each boss is 0.25 times of d. These are the bosses, bearing, bearing bosses. So here this is 0.25, this is 0.25, total 0.5. Some clearance will be given between the boss and small end. So here some small clearance will be there between the power boss and small end. P max is the maximum gas pressure. D naught is the outer diameter of the pin that you can notice here. This is the outer diameter. Di is the inner diameter. And sigma b is the permissible bending stress that is 80 MPa per case hardened steel, 140 MPa per heat treated alloy steel. Generally these piston pins are made of these two materials. Now consider the bearing failure. So bearing failure means you have to consider the projected areas. Then gas load that is F that is directly acting on the, if you consider this bearing bosses that is directly acting on the projected area that is 0.25 d into d naught d naught is the diameter here also 0.25 d into d naught total sum is 0.5 into d naught that is the area into pb1 is the bearing pressure between the piston bosses okay if you consider the small end connecting rod small end then Projected area is 0.45 d times d naught. Up to here, this is the 0.45 d is the length into d naught is the diameter. This is the projected area into PB2. PB2 is the permissible bearing pressure of connecting rod small end. So in between this connecting rod small end and this piston pin, this is the permissible bearing pressure. Okay, d naught is equal for in both the equations. So from this you can get the D naught value. Now consider the bending failure. Piston can be assumed as a simply supported beam with UDL. So this is the simply supported beam. When you convert this UDL into point load that is the value F. Then this is acting at the center. Automatically you will get the reactions at these ends A and B as F by 2 and F by 2 as it is acting at the center then if you draw a free board diagram by taking the section somewhere here the section is something like this here we are taking the section to get the maximum bending moment then this is f by 2 ra equal to f by 2 this total f is split into two halves that means here this portion is f by 2 that f by 2 will act at a distance of 0.45 d by 4 because this total length is 0.45 d by 2 here to here this is 0.45 d up to here means 0.45 d by 2 and center to this means 0.45 d by 4 this is f by 2 now take the moments about c
then maximum bending moment equal to this f by 2 into 0.75 d by 2 that is in the clockwise direction minus this is in the counter clockwise direction minus this f by 2 into 0.45 d by 4 this is in the negative direction counter clockwise that is maximum bending moment if you simplify this you will get something like this 21 f d by 160 this is sim just simplification if you again simplify this 21 by 160 means 0 0.1312 f into d then our final aim is to find the bending stress bending stress equal to maximum bending moment by section modulus section modulus is pi by 32 into d naught to the power of 4 minus di to the power of 4 by d naught this is the section modulus so in this way you can get the maximum bending moment and from that you can get the bending stress now we will solve a simple problem to understand this concept the problem is something like this design a cast iron piston for a four stroke IC engine with the following specifications cylinder bore is 100 mm this is nothing but capital D stroke length is 120 mm this you can assume as L maximum gas pressure is equal to 4 Newton per mm square this is PM small PM indicated mean effective pressure this is 0 0.75 into 0 0.75 Newton per mm square this is P mechanical efficiency 80% Fuel consumption is 0 0.15 kg per watt per hour. This is small m. Higher calorific value for fuel is 42 into 10 cube kilojoules per kg. Speed is 2000 rpm as it is the four stroke engine. Number of strokes you can consider as 1000 that is 2000 by 2. Assume any other relevant data and you have to design the piston. So this is the total given data, capital D, L value, P max value, PM value, efficiency, mass of the fuel, higher calorific value, N value, these are the values given. Now you have to design the piston head. For the strength based design, sigma T is required, D is given, P max is given, sigma T is required. Sigma T value you can assume as 35 Newton per mm square for cast iron. Now you substitute all this, you will get the T1 value as 15 mm. Now consider the thermal design. T2 equal to H by 12.56 K into T C minus T E. Here K value, T C minus T E, these two values are not given. You have to assume like this. Then you find the H value using this equation. So here to get the H value, you have to find the BHP value. BHP equal to n into IHP, you have to find the IHP value. IHP equal to PM into LAN by 60. So PM value is given, L value is given, A value is given, N value is given. You can get the IHP value. So you find this. So L equal to, L you have to consider in meters. It is given in mm, you just convert that into meters. Then N will become N by 2 because it is a 4 stroke engine. Then you can get the A, A equal to pi by 4 d square, d value is given, you can get A value. So once you find all these values, if you substitute, you will get IHP, after that you can get BHP like this. This is the A value, this is the IHP value, this is the BHP value. Then you can get the H value. To get the H value, you have to find the M value. So M equal to 0.15 kg per kilowatt per hour that is the given data. Then M value we require in kg per kilowatt per second. So that's why this in place of hour to get second you just divide this with 3600. Then find the H value that is 824.67 watts. After that you can get the T2 value 0 0.0064 meters. Now you convert that into millimeters that is 6.4 millimeters. So among T1 and T2, T1 value is greater than T2. That's why T you can assume as 15, which is nothing but T1. Wall thickness, wall thickness is 0 0.3 times of T. Then pistons kit. For this you need to find the gas load. 
after that you have to find the side thrust r equal to 0.09 times of this gas load then r equal to ln into d into pb ln to d is the pb value ln to d is the projected area pb is the bearing pressure that is 0.3 you can assume then you will get this l value this is the f value here you will get r value substitute this r value and pb value d value you will get the l value that is the skip length then piston rings tr equal d into root over 3 root over 3 into pr by sigma t pr sigma t values you can assume like this and you can find ta value then piston pin for finding the piston pin sigma b equal to mx by z mx equal to 0.1312 into fd f value already we have calculated that is the gas load t value is given from that you can get mx f value is like this and you need to find z value z value you can find like this this is the mx value sigma t value is known to you that's why if you rearrange it you will get the t not value like this 39.22 mm you will get di is 0.6 times of d not this is also one standard relation that's why you can get the di value like this 0.6 times of d not so by substituting this di value here you are getting the z in terms of d not like this in this way you can design all the parts of the piston thanks for watching my video if you like this video please subscribe to my channel